Hello and welcome to Stories That Shape Us. My name is Joanna Daniel. In yesterday's podcast, I talked about three things to help your body to cope with stress. And we have a special guest come in that is going to talk about stress. And uh, we're not doing a stress series, but I just, as I was, as I, we did a pre-podcast um, chat a couple of days ago. And as I was doing yesterday's um, uh, podcast, it just occurred to me to, that I wanted to talk to you about stress and how I know about stress, not just from a professional perspective where I have been working in this area for many, many years and knew these, knew these things. And so I'm not, I'm not talking just from something that I've studied and, and researched, right? Um, sometimes, of course, the podcast is about that, but it is stories that shape us. So I'm going to talk about the story that shaped me and um, my 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 uh, run in with stress and why I know that it works. The, these things that I'm teaching you about how to manage stress in your body, why I know that it works. There's so many things that is generational that we don't understand. And earlier on in the stories that shape us, I talk about some of the things that we do and where we learn some of the things and sometimes conversation that I have with people in my family, because one, one book that I absolutely love is It Didn't Start With You by Mark Woolen that talks about things that is coming down through the generations and, you know, things that are our foreparents that are our uncle on our mother's side or a cousin on our father's side that did that we we're doing and we don't understand like we can have a fear of water but we don't know why and it's coming something down through the dna down through the generations right so we need to understand the stories that shape us as much as we possibly can as people we need to understand why we're doing the things that we're doing now i am a doer um for those who know me closely know that i will get things done right i make my list and i work through my list um i have three children uh, one of the things I said to myself when I had my children was that I wasn't going to be superwoman. But one of the, the stories that shape us is the things that we see. We can only do what we see because we're in that automatic mode until we learn something else and do something different, right? So even though I said I wasn't going to be super mom, and, and I don't even know what the definition of that is, but what I meant by that was that I wasn't going to do everything. I wasn't going to be all things to all people and do everything. And I thought I was doing pretty good at it, but I also was doing everything. I was doing a lot. At one of my birthday parties, my friend gave me a, 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 a plaque that says um, queen of everything. And I think that was how I was seeing as well, even though I didn't see myself that way. But that was how I was seeing. I was doing a lot of stuff at the same time. And so I didn't understand what it was doing to my body because I was just in automatic mode. I was just doing what I saw everybody else did. My mother did it. Her mother did it. Aunties did it. Everybody did it, right? Everybody was doing it. So you just do what you see. And even though I didn't, I knew I didn't want to be busy, I didn't know how to not be busy. So one day I was, um, home, you know, I homeschool. And so I was home with the children and I was traveling. I started to travel to speak and I had a list of things to do, long list of things to do. I think I might've shared this in the stories that shape us before. I had a long list of things to do. And I remember looking at the list and feeling really tense in my body. But those days I didn't know how to, how to understand and be as in tune with my body as I am today. And I have to be attuned with my body because I'm learning how to look after myself. Because self-care is really understanding our body. Well, part of self-care is understanding our bodies and giving our body what it needs, responding to it. When it says it needs water, give it water. When it needs rest, stop and rest, those kind of things. And so I had this long list of things to do, including call my daughters here, go for a walk, pack, because we were, we were traveling again to speak. We were doing back-to-back -back speaking. I would come home on Sunday and I'm leaving again on Friday with three kids and my husband was working away. And, and so I was doing this and I was doing this. And one day I had this long list of things to do. I felt tired, but I wasn't stopping because I like to make lists. And so I was going to make my way through everything on that list before I stopped. That's how I am, right? 
if I have 10 things on that list, I'm making my way through all 10 today. It must be done. Must. That's my first clue there that that when we must do something or have to do something, that's going to put us in a position, right? So for some reason that day, I decided to call my aunt, my father's sister, called her and she says, I hope you're not working too hard, you know, because our family tend to work hard and then we have a breakdown. I'm like, nobody ever told me that. <laughs> Nobody, nobody shared this information with me. It's not information that we not normally share and sit and talk about. And but, but here was somebody, the generation, two generations above me, having some really vital information, some story that could help me unlock how I manage life, how I dealt with stress, what the things I put on my plate. When she told me that, as I'm talking to you and I'm sharing this story with you, I'm remembering what my body felt like. Because at the time, though I felt it, as I said, I didn't know what it was because I didn't know how to be as attuned. And I think I was used to the feeling of just tenseness in my shoulders and my back and just stress because I have to get through the list. And so when she told me that, it was like a light bulb moment for me. I'm thinking, that's my life. I, I like to do things. I love to work. I love what I do. I love this podcast. I love doing the retreats. I love planning the conferences. I love executing. I love pouring in. I love planning the workshops. I love every. I love talking to you when you ring me. I love everything about what I do. But I had to, after that conversation with my aunt, I had to change everything. That day, everything off the list went except combing my daughter's hair and going for a walk. I did two things off the list that day did her hair, went for a walk. And would you believe it? The world didn't end. The next morning we woke up and the world didn't end. Before that, it would feel like the world would end. So I must have had a story that I was telling myself about my list, about, I, I was tying perhaps my list to my value. And if I didn't complete the list, th though nobody knew if I completed this list or not, except me, but somehow, it was connected to how I see myself and my self-worth. That conversation with my aunt freed me from not needing value from completing tasks or feeling like I've went, I've done 20 things today. I could do two things and I'm okay. That conversation changed my life, changed how I interacted with, with things. It, it helped me to be more aware of myself and what I was doing and how much I was doing. And of course, other things that happened over the years taught me more and I had to learn and unlearn a lot of things in order to manage stress. So when I'm sharing with you the things that helps with stress, for example, the one I shared in, in yesterday's podcast was physical activity, exercise, going for a walk, stretching, swimming, bike riding, going to the gym, doing aerobics, whatever you do, physical activity is a really crucial uh, component of helping you to manage stress. Of course, you need to sit in with the feeling like I shared yesterday it might be connected to why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I doing as much as I'm doing? Maybe we don't need to do as much as we're doing. Maybe your to-do list don't need five things. It might need just one. And for the rest of the day, you can lie on your back, you can read a book, you can hang out with the children, you can play a game with them, you can just be and let them be in the room, and you're not doing anything and you're comfortable doing that. It might just be playing music and listening and laughter. It might be just making a delicious meal for your family and spend, linger long around the table while everybody talk or you just sit and listen to the children as they talk. All of those things help us to, to manage stress, help us to, to connect as well, help us to connect with others and help us to connect with ourselves, clear our minds so that we can hear God speak into our hearts more. But whatever you do, look at your to-do list. Be Stop so you can connect with your mind and your body so you can hear how your body's feeling and give it what it needs understand your context what is the thing that leads you to overwork to do too many things sometimes we see the other woman doing things and feel like we can do all that they're doing 
because if they do it, then we can do it too. And I say, not necessarily because you you don't have the same motivation and the same story that shaped them is so com- your story is completely different. But whatever you're doing, know that there is a fallout for stress. And I'm I'm cutting a lot out, but it took me a while to be able to retrain myself to even though my to do list was cut down. The the an, another pivotal moment for me was sitting in hospital going to do a scan. And then getting a call back from the doctor the next day and not two weeks, as the lady had told me. And my friend said, Jonna, that's stress. Really another light bulb moment, which again changed my life. I haven't come back since. Changed my life and continue to change my life. We want to be able to understand it before we get to that place. So as as I'm sharing my journey with you, it's, it's a lot more to share. I'm going to have this conversation in tomorrow's podcast. Uh, around lifestyle medicine and some of the things that is useful for managing stress, but investigate for yourself the story that shapes you. Why do you do the things that you're doing? How much do you have on your plate? Is there some things that can come off? I promise you the world won't end. Things will carry on as normal. Maybe some you can hire somebody to do. Maybe some is not necessary at all and they can wait until next week or next month or next year. Maybe they can go way down on the list of priority. Put you further up on, the, on, on your priority list. Put rest, put exercise, put connection, social interaction, put prayer time and Bible study time, put, put um, a leisurely meal and a holiday. Put you on your list because when you are happy, when you're relaxed, when you're not stressed, your family and the people that you love and serve get so much more out of you than when you're ill. Um, through stress thank you for joining me in this episode of stories that shape us i hope you'll join me on the next story